All right, hi Brandon. So we're showing you our mobile power supply design final presentation video. This is for EE497, Senior Design 1, and it's for the ECE department. So who we are? We are Ron Abir Das, uh, which is me, and EE, Stephanie Silich, uh, Cassandra Williams, and Jonathan Young. Um, and we have a broad and diverse background. Our advisors, there is Dr. Baker, which is our project advisor, and Brandon Blackstone, our senior design instructor and coordinator. So for senior design, we have to find the existence of a problem and then try to mitigate that problem and find a solution. So existence of a problem. Well, one problem is uh, most consumers in this day and age have multiple portable electronics needed to be charged, from your cell phone to your laptop, uh, tablets with the you know big tablet boom a lot of uh, different devices like uh, smart watches and uh, Bluetooth headsets portable batteries um, auxiliary Bluetooth uh, accessories like you know uh, headphones or mice there are it's a compounding problem is there are more and more devices some level of unification has been done through USB but for the most part you see someone carrying a very hefty laptop charger they're also carrying a charger for their tablet. They're also carrying a charger for their phone. And there's only so many ports. Now, how do we fix this? There is in existence, of course, USB charging hubs, but nothing that quite supports the uh, burgeoning, you know, laptop market. How do you charge your high powered laptop? You can't do it with existing charging solutions. So USB power delivery with the Issuing of USB 3, all the way back as this official slide shows from 2012, there was a power delivery standard that was introduced and has still taken slow market adoption. So right now is a very integral and pioneering period for market um, uh, reaction. We're in the early phases where there's a lot of you know wild designs being tested out and nothing truly in existence that meets consumers' needs. Now there's various power profiles, with power profile one being the more standard power profile of five volt output at two amps, and that's most cell phone chargers operate around the profile one and profile two range. With some new charging solutions such as Quick Charge from Qualcomm, a proprietary solution that only supports certain phones uh, working around the uh, 18 watt period. So you have all these you know, you know, different chargers. There's a lot of uh, market fragmentation. Again, this is very early days before consumers did not have so many portable devices. So what do we do going forward? How do we actually hit something like Power Profile 5, which will support uh, things like laptops, will support portable displays, will support powered hubs where you can connect all your devices to do simultaneous charging? Where exists such a solution? So before we can talk about existing solutions, we have to look at background introductory theory for a second. So in our background theory, we have uh, a typical power supply. Now we have, as you can see in this diagram, we have the transformer stage where we take 120 volts RMS at 60 hertz, and then we do a step down. It's still, as you can see from the waveform, it's still AC, which is unusable by our electronics. Then we have a uh, full wave diode rectification, a filtering stage, a voltage regulator, and the load. Now, our primary area of concern is the voltage regulator, where our um, efficiency standards and total power deliverable is where this is going to be worked. It's from this transitioning from this um, jagged DC to this clean and stable, efficient DC to meet some target requirements. Remember, we're stepping down 120 volts, uh, and to meet this uh, this five volt at 20 amp stage or 20 volts at five amps. So current market analysis and trends. So let's take a quick look at what exists today. Now, we have the Finisic Start, which is a, <coughs> as you can see from this design, it's an output power of 65 watts. It supports just a pretty standard five volts at 2.1 amps. It's a very small design. The point is it's compatible with most laptops and cell phones. It's meant to be a one-stop shop charging solution that supports everything, and as you can see from this colorful marketing material. 
Alternatively, we have the Zolt. Now, I'm showing an Amazon page because instead of their product website, because this product is actually already in existence. And you can see from its pictures um, this more clearly. There has three USB charging hubs and then this port for um, charging a laptop. Now, about the product. Uh, 70 watts, it's very convenient, incredibly small. Um, you know, you can charge everything. Now, what, what's the issue? Well, at a hundred dollars, you know, for initial market penetration, and with customer reviews being, you know, semi-satisfactory, there are, you know, still kinks that need to be worked out, to say the least. So, <coughs> now back to our, uh, our presentation at hand. So that's the current market trends. There are actually not that many suppliers. So our design. Our base design specifications was USB power delivery, power profile 5 compliance, doing 5 volts at 20 amps and 20 volts at 5 amps. We cover a whole gamut of laptops to multiple high-powered cell phones, which only operate at the 5 volt range. It has to be an isolated power supply, which means that the AC mains and the final point of load uh, product have to be uh, isolated by means of a uh, isolation transformer. Above 70% conversion efficiency. So converting from AC to DC, we shouldn't have that much power loss. Remember, we want the design to be small and, and convenient. And then less than 1% output ripple. So we don't want it to be too noisy. We want an efficient and high quality design. So before we can move on, let us analyze what we have right now. So taking a quick look, We'll take a quick look at this is our AC to DC front end. And in this AC to DC front end, which I won't sim for, for, for this because it would just, uh, it, it has an extremely long startup time, but this is just a power factor correction stage. And this is the front end that takes care of the full wave rectification. Um, this is provided by an LT Spice controller and some support circuitry that is pulled from the data sheet. The second stage is <coughs> this is the uh, DC to DC conversion stage, which is the voltage regulation shown before. So this is what was discussed where it takes 30 volts and input and steps it down to 5 volts while doing 20 amps. The exact topology is called an active clamp converter. So we can quickly sim it to show um, what, what is going on. So we will pick V out right there and the current through. And let's take a look at what's going on. So after this initial transient time, and you can tell this, this transient response period is extremely small, we are right at where our target voltage is. So let's just try to zoom in and this range right here. So what are we looking at? We are hitting right around the, the five volt period, so for V out, and then we're hitting 25.5 at above spec. So we have some overhead. So future objectives and challenges. So plans. We have to change some parts of the DC, AC to DC front end. Our plan is to also improve the power factor correction. We ran into some issues with the controller that we have right now. And then prototype by the end of December with an initial perf board design. Um, and then end of January, we'll want a PCB run complete. We have initial PCB schematics, um, but we had some challenges with some you know, perf board issues uh, since it was such a high power design. Um, haven't quite gotten it to, to work, so we are giving a month of time for this prototyping period. We thought we'd be done by the end of January, I mean, the end of November, but it is extended forward. So team tools and utilities. I just want to take a second and talk about all the kinds of software that we've been using. So our technology stack consists of LT Spice for simulation, MATLAB for our, the converter transfer function, the mathematical modeling. Um, all our models are derived in MATLAB. Eagle Professional for PCB design, and then Python as an alternative to MATLAB to do more numerical analysis, and uh, we run through more graphs and more data uh, as an in-between uh, to using MATLAB. The communication stack we use. So for communicating in between team members, we are using Atlassian's Confluence, Atlassian's HipChat, and Google Drive. Confluence is a Wikipedia-style um, group data management center. Atlassian's HipChat is almost an improved version of Hangouts that's meant for group activities. And finally, we have Google Drive, which is our uh, storage hub. 
that's it. Thank you for watching.